Welcome aboard the North Yorkshire Moors Railway for a journey back in time to the golden age of steam. Good afternoon, can I see tickets, please? Every year, half a million visitors come to marvel at these miracles of Victorian engineering. I came all the way from Ireland for this. Keeping it all on track are a dedicated team full of pride, passion and true Yorkshire grit. Be honest, we love it. Engine shed manager Piglet is in charge of all things mechanical. Just pranged it into the side of the building. I've got that Miley Cyrus song in my head now. Boss Chris has to balance the books. I'm not the fat controller. Train Mad Rose twins collect the cash. This isn't for tickets, it's just tips. And Chief Boilersmith Mark must keep the engines in good health. We are the heart experts of the steam engines. This time, the twins take on new railway challenges. Apparently there's cows on the line on network rail. Could all be going slightly pear-shaped. Piglet must get to grips with steam crane operation. Ready when you are, Charlie. I think it's time to go before I cause any more damage. And an engine doesn't want to make its 100th birthday celebration. Bit of a nightmare, really. It's a roller coaster ride through glorious country. The Yorkshire Steam Railway. All aboard. Have you got a ticket for the dog? After a bumper summer at the North Yorkshire Moors Railway, preparations are underway for the autumn season. It's a time of year when railways boost their income by putting on steam festivals, traditionally called galas. Celebrations of steam, they feature star engines from all over the country. The gala is effectively a game of top trumps, swapping engines, borrowing them from other railways and showing off to the world. This year, boss Chris has pulled off a coup by landing an A-lister loco. A Great Western, a 2800-class engine. But it comes with one big condition. The deal to get the locomotive from the Seven Valley Railway over in the Midlands, we've also said to them that they can borrow our Q6 locomotive. But we are a bit worried about whether we can deliver on it. It's a gamble. The Q6 hasn't run for over two years after coming out of service for a major overhaul. The man responsible for trying to get it ready is engine shed boss Piglet. This is a really, really unique engine, this one. It is actually the only one in existence. It's not flying Scotsman and it doesn't have a fancy brass nameplate or anything like that, but these were the workhorses of the railways, you know. These were the ones that were doing the day in, day out, the graft all in all the coal trains and doing all the mucky jobs. But nonetheless, these helped made Britain where we are today, you know. It's, it's part of our industrial heritage. As a condition of the swap deal that the railway has struck, Piglet must have the Q6 ready to go to the Seven Valley Gala in just three weeks. I'm just reattaching the gauges back on the engine. But there's another very special reason why he's eager to see the old girl up and running again. It's its 100th birthday this year. You know, 100 birthdays don't come along very often, do they? You know what I mean? I don't think it's going to get a letter from from the Queen or anything like that. You never know. If she doesn't, I'll maybe, I'll maybe write you a nice little letter, you know what I mean, and just say, well done, and um, here's to the next 100 years, you know. Um, I don't think I'll be celebrating that one. While Piglet wrestles to get the Q6 ready, over at Pickering, they're thinking much further ahead. John Bailey. Did you say that was, was Santa Claus? It looks like Christmas has come early. Very early. John Bailey is chairman of the NYMR and a former high-flying corporate lawyer. It is going to be a bit warm today, I think. Turns out the late summer sun hasn't gone to John's head. He's been roped in to help out marketing manager Laura, who's organising a photo shoot to help promote the railway's Santa specials. Santa's obviously in the North Pole, preparing for the big day himself. Hello! <laughs> so we've asked our trust chairman to step in to help out with our Santa photo shoot. Thank you very much. That's a lovely cup of tea. Everybody <laughs> thinks I've got the wrong date. While John discovers his inner Santa, Back at HQ, plans for the shoot hit a pudding problem. Get a Christmas pudding and maybe get Santa with it on the, on the end of his yeah. spit. I'll see if I can get one in Pickering, but it might be quite tricky in August. Yeah. 
He's requested a Christmas pudding, which may be quite interesting to source. Chairman John doesn't mind looking silly when it's for a good cause. It's the tenth year the railway have run Santa Specials and they've become a big earner. It's very important that we get the message out about Santa Specials that we desperately need the cash flow coming in when we've still got the money going out in costs and overhaul expenses. At HQ, one of Laura's little helpers has managed to track down a Christmas pud. Santa will be very happy. Hello! <laughs> Hello! How are we? Time to get down to serious business. Huge smile, big eyes again as you were before. I haven't got the date wrong, by the way. We're just doing a photo shoot. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's nice. The problem with John as Santa is we're trying to get a shot done and he ends up talking to all the passengers. And are you being good? I am in. Oh, I'm I pleased to hear it. <laughs> Let's hope the Santa specials bring the railway sacks full of cash. We didn't do the bit with the Christmas pudding, but I think actual Santa Claus will be pretty impressed. That hand's perfect. That hand on the bubble. Okay. At the engine shed, worried about the promise he's made to lend their Q6 engine to another railway. Boss Chris has come over to check up on progress. It's really reputational apart from anything else. You don't want the NYMR being known for not producing engines. Certainly making sure that we do things that we say we're going to do. The biggest obstacle to the engine going back into service is making sure its restored boiler is safe. The source of the engine's power, the boiler generates steam at immense pressure. It's effectively a massive bomb on wheels, so we've got to make sure that it doesn't go off. The boiler has to get through a series of crucial safety tests starting today. Head boiler Smith Mark is the man under pressure. What we're going to do is squeeze the boiler, basically put water, keep pumping water in. We're going to get this pressure gauge all the way around to 270 psi, which is one and a half times the boiler's working pressure. Make sure that the boiler is structurally fine. As the pressure builds, the water will start to expose any structural faults in the engine. 255 now, so we're almost there. So I'm going to have a quick walk around, check the front end, check down the sides, etc. And uh, by the time we get back, probably run about 270 them. Mark starts by giving the main body of the boiler a once over. So far, so good. We'll try and maintain now around the 270. Now that the boiler's at full pressure, Mark checks the new pipes in the smoke box at the front. The water dripping down is just from some of the bolts and the, the joints. Well, they're all coming off again anyway for, for new joints on them. So, uh, so I'm not worried about any of them leaks. The main thing we are checking for is where these tubes go into the header, just in there. We check and see if there's any water coming down. And as you can see, they're all absolutely bone dry. Mark's happy so far but he's yet to check the most critical part of the boiler, the firebox. It's where the metal has to stand up to the most extreme temperatures. And Mark spots something that doesn't look right. A couple of drips of water, got a rag, I'm just wiping in the areas. If there's any more drips, I can see the drips like fresh, work out where they're coming from. He's found what could be a crack. It's like a tiny pinhole, but then next to it, there's a couple of areas where there's lots of just minute little cracks. If the crack is serious, the deal to swap the Q6 will be off. <laughs> At the North Yorkshire Moors Railway, they're in the middle of organising the autumn steam festival season. Crucial to the railway's plans is an engine swap Boss Chris has agreed with another railway. Steam engines are very fickle things. You've told the world you're going to do something, so there's always that fear of embarrassment. With the Q6 engine not yet back in service after a two-year overhaul, it looks like Chris's swap is looking shaky. Head boiler Smith Mark has just found what could be a critical leak in the engine's firebox. The special white spray turns dark red when it detects a crack. 
spray the white paint on and it shows me everything I don't want to see. That's wet. It shows that there's a leak from an old repair and that's potentially very bad news. Well, it comes across there and down to here. What I need to find out, is it a, a deep crack or is it just a, a part of where the weld is and it's just an imperfection in the weld? If it's a serious crack, it'll be tough to get the Q6 back on track. Mark grinds the surface down to see if the extent of the problem is revealed. It's actually shown more. It's basically brought up a load of little micro cracks now, which there shouldn't be any, which is a bit of a nightmare, really. To make matters even worse, this is a copper weld and there are only a handful of copper welding specialists in the country. With the Q6's official boiler inspection scheduled in just four days, Mark makes a desperate call. How soon do you think you could get here if it needed welding? All right, OK. Yeah, it's a bit late for us. Right, OK, mate. well, thanks very much anyway. All right, I'll speak to you soon. Cheers, bye. The copper welder is in great demand and can't do an emergency job. He's not available to do any welding until sort of mid-end of September, which is no good for us, really. So it's now making a judgment call, really, on what we think's the best to do. Keeping these old engines running is an increasing challenge. Thousands of steam engines once graced our railways, but today just 120 are still running. That any survive at all is a surprise to John Fletcher, who runs the NYMR's fundraising shop. There we are. Look at that little beauty. Would you like a bag? Bye. Yeah. It was 50 years ago this month that the last steam locos were finally retired by British Rail. John was a fireman on the footplate on the very last day they ran. There are thousands of people lying in the trackside. I don't think the sadness hit us until we were reaching our journey's end. That scene there is taken on the last day of steam on Lost to Coal Motive Power Depot. In fact, on the other side is one of our drivers and firemen signing autographs. I suppose these days he'll be doing selfies. John has written a memoir of the 50 years he spent on the footplate. It's getting as popular as Fifty Shades of Grey. I should have called it Fifty Shades of Black. When John was working as a steam fireman in the 1960s, yards like this were a very different place. With a lot more men, probably 200 of us, really, fitting stuff, uh, boiler maker stuff, steam razors, knocker-ups. You don't have any knocker-ups here. The guy went round on his bike, knocking up and gave him a piece of paper and told him what time to come to work. Nobody had a telephone. John has now retired from the footplate, but he's always more than happy to give the new generation the benefit of his experience. This shovel here, come here and let's look at it, right? Well, bloody hell, fire. I couldn't use that. They're too bloody heavy, these things. I'm not the woman I was, but... Uh, I've uh, combined these with Western Flitz. That's right. He, he was buying all the drinks in the pub. That does help in the training programme. That's right. Go this way. Of all the engines at the NYMR, a Black 5 44806 holds special memories for John. This is one of my old locos. We had a... Uh, a few happy hours together. We used to run up to 75 or 80 miles an hour and take your false teeth out. 4th of August, 68. That's a bit of taking in, you know. 50 years ago, I was working on this machine at <laughs> Bird's Nest. <laughs> yeah, good job the cats haven't seen it. It's unbelievable that, as a young man, this was your daily bread, firing these things. It was something you wanted to do all your life and you'd achieved that ambition and it was taken away from you, but it's progress. For John, steam is in his blood. I could never not turn round and look at one, you know. It's, uh, they're from another age, aren't they? Different world.
now a whole generation of people born after steam disappeared from our railways. But the passion of some of these new enthusiasts is helping keep steam alive. And there are none more passionate than train mad twins Matt and Ed Rose. See tickets, please. Thank you. At age 16, they became the railway's youngest ever travelling ticket inspectors. This isn't for tickets, it's just tips. Two years on, the twins are now looking to take on a new railway challenge. But this time, the boys are going it alone. Ed is swapping his ticket punch for a shovel, giving the foot play to try. Another thing to put on the list, really, the rules of the road in different sides of the railway, so cleaning and firing. I have always wanted to climb on an engine. I am king of the castle now, eh? Ed's getting stuck into some hard labour today. But where's Matt? Matt doesn't really like footplate stuff. He doesn't like any work, really. Matt's not getting his hands dirty. He's staying inside, in the guard's van. Today is my first guard training turn. Hopefully, it should be a nice introduction to the world of guarding. Guard of 28 years and legend within the NYMR, Dave Diesel Tibbet would beg to differ. A lot of the time, the guard has just seemed to be apparently taking it easy. Not necessarily the case, though. Matt, you're in for a fun day? Yeah, I imagine so. The guard is responsible for the safety of everyone on the train. See, it's his first lesson. He should have brought his goods with him. <laughs> Under the watchful eye of experienced driver Matt Five Bellies Fisher, Ed is learning the job of a fireman. Keeping one of these locos at exactly the right steam pressure involves not only stamina, but great skill. We go the back, we're not the front of it. Yeah. Too much coal and you're wasting energy. Too little and you won't have enough power, especially when you've got to climb the 1 in 49 hill up to Goathland. For Ed, it's a baptism involving fire. But back at Gromont, his brother's initiation quickly turns into a baptism of fire. Is that door shut? Set her. I'll go down. We'll go Heritage down. carriages don't have automatic doors, and a passenger hasn't closed one properly. A potentially dangerous situation is averted. Back on the loco footplate, Ed is warming to the life of a fireman. That's me, fella. It's a bit more relaxed than this. While Matt's going from one problem to another. No. Oh, oh no, don't stop. Don't stop on the bloody tracks, man. As the train gets into Goatland Station, it stops too early. Alarmingly, passengers are trying to open the doors. Stop, stop, stop. Close the door, please! Could all be going slightly perfect. Quick acting Dave saves the day. Proceed forward, but do not go backwards under any circumstances. Meanwhile, Ed's engine has reached Goatland's summit, so it's downhill all the way to Pickering. On Matt's guard shift, there's one final surprise in store. Apparently there's cows on the line on network rail. Which means Matt won't be finishing any time soon. It's just five days before the Q6 engine is meant to go off for its swap. The Seven Valley Railway urgently want confirmation that the engine is coming. Piglet calls an emergency meeting with department heads Mark and Barney. So it's now 9.48. The message I got, can we have a decision regarding the Q6 by 10 a.m.? Please, marketing need to finalise promotional posters and leaflets, etc. We've got 12 minutes. Until tomorrow, when the steam test is done, we've got, we can't give an answer. We can't. We just, we just don't know. We can't, it can't go, can it? It's as simple as that. I don't think it wants to celebrate its 100th birthday this year, does it? It's Would putting you? up a bit of a fight. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're I just want to retire, put me in the railway museum. Put me I'm done. Put me in the museum, I've had enough. <laughs> All right, cheers, thanks for that. With the solution to the boiler leaks nowhere in sight, it looks like the Q6 will be missing its trip to the Seven Valley. The Q6 engine is due to leave for the Seven Valley Railway in a few days, but it still hasn't passed a crucial safety test. To make matters worse, 
they've discovered a crack in the boiler that can only be mended by a specialist copper welder. Iglet is about to call the railway to break the bad news. Morning, Duncan. You all right? Morning. Yeah, sorry for <laughs> harassing you. No, it's it's all right. I know exactly how it feels. It's a, this is a, the, a, such a difficult one because they're trying, but it is right down to the nail. But for me to sit here now and say, yes, it'll be absolutely fine and it'll be ready for your gala, I can't. I'll be lying because I haven't tested it. But Duncan is also in a tight spot. And look, the Q6 is coming, you know. You yeah. know and I think, I, th I think, probably from a, a publicity side this way, this end, I think we should stick with that story. No, 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 Having already promoted the Q6 visit and sold tickets, the Seven Valley aren't taking no for an answer. All right, any, any changes and I'll, I'll keep you up to date, all right? This now heaps more pressure on the engine shed to somehow get the Q6 ready. Its official safety inspection is in just 48 hours. I've just talked to Duncan Ballard. Right. He's still quite keen on having the Q6. Oh, I need to go and tell Matt then. Yeah. Because I've just said to Matt. Yeah. Right. Cool. I'll leave you to it. All right. <laughs> the, the story changes every minute. Have you spoken to Piglet? No, I've just come back from the tea rooms. The pressure's back on, especially for Mark. It's not over till it's over. Literally, it, when, 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 the, when the lorry turns up, I don't think the lorry driver's going to know what engine's going to go on the lorry. But without a specialist copper welder to fix the worrying crack in the engine's firebox, the Q6 won't pass its test. Mark has called every copper welder he knows to see if they can make an emergency visit. There's only four or five people in the country that do copper welding and they're either on the south coast, they're up in Scotland, or, you know, they're, five, they're four or five hours with the driving away from us. So to get them to drop everything to come and see us to do what is going to be like a 10 minute job, it's, uh, we've, we've got to fit in with them. But none are available. And Mark is running out of ideas. While the team at the shed battle to get the Q6 engine ready, Boss Chris is in deepest Wales, heading for an old steam stomping ground. It's going past Tarflin Lake, the lake that holds the railway's name. Going back to my old haunting ground where I used to be general manager on the Southland Railway. Chris is on a mission to check up on an engine that he's hoping to bring to the NYMR. Talk to him about the finer details about a certain little blue engine that's coming to the North Yorkshire Moors Railway uh, for our gala. <laughs> The last of its kind, RAF engine number six, or Douglas, is a narrow gauge loco that started life working at Air Force bases. It hasn't been away from the Talafin Railway since it arrived over 60 years ago. Morning, Matt, you're right? Morning, 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 Nicky. Oh, hello. So we've got problems then? Uh, just a little bit, Chris, yes. It's not just the NYMR that are having trouble with their locos. Well, I suppose the big question is. How big a job is it? Uh, well, unfortunately, we've got to take all the motion off, balance pipe, brake gear, and we've got to go take it into the works then and jack. So what's wrong with it? Uh, hot oxo box. Yeah. Happy so. days. Yeah. Um, oh, well. These things happen. And unfortunately, I've just discovered it's broken, so it's not in service, which is not what I've really wanted. The concern now, of course, is whether it would be able to come up to the moors or whether they'd be still working on it at the time. My gut reaction is that David will make sure that the engine is repaired, ready to come up. So I'm reasonably relaxed about it, but it's still a disappointment that the engine's broken. Boss Chris's day job might be counting the pounds, shillings and pence, but first and foremost, he's a lifelong lover of steam. Right, this is me for the day. Off we go to drive a steam engine. Chris's association with the Talafin goes back long before he was general manager. It's where he first fell in love with steam and joined the railway as a teenage volunteer. Hi, Chris. Jane, how are you, Jane? Doing? Are you all right? So, yes. <laughs> is it Jane? Do you know me since I was, what, 14? 14, yeah. I 14. think we brought you here to the railway in the first instance. Yeah. <laughs> it was no accident that Chris came to the Talathin. He was inspired to come to the railway by its most famous volunteer, the Reverend W. Audrey, author of the Thomas the Tank Engine books. It is funny to think that this is the chair, ultimately, where the Reverend Audrey's books were all written. 
the typewriter they were written on, and his pipe and glasses. When the Reverend died, he left the contents of his study to the railway. An awful lot of people have been inspired by his books as children and have gone on to become volunteers at Heritage Railways throughout the UK and probably the world. Chris was one of those children. We had the full 26 and they used to be on a bookcase in my bedroom. And my dad used to say, which one do you want? And he'd go through, no, not that one, no, not that one, no, not I'll have that one, yeah, I'll have that one. And that was the kind of nightly ritual. It even got to the point now that my dad went away on business and he recorded five of the books on a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder that my mom would then play for the five nights he was away <laughs> on holiday. But enough of Thomas the Tank Engine. Time for Chris to tootle off with his little engine. I'm not the fat controller. Who could want for more than this? Beautiful Welsh scenery, fantastic old engine to play with. Now we start to rock and roll, mate. The Talithin line is just over seven miles long and was built to transport slate. 15 miles an hour dead on. Thank you. NYMR's steam festival is still several weeks away, but with engines expected to be coming from all over the country, they're going to need all the space they can get. Piglet power! Oh, oh like my intestines just popped out with... Which means Piglet has got to move Lucy, his very own steam engine pet project. The little engine that Chris Price has got coming, they want to put it on this wagon. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to lift man off it before I've finished it, which is a little bit annoying, but hey, these things happen. Piglet is very proud of his quirky little steam engine. It is my baby, yeah. Very old baby as well, actually. In its prime, this was like top technology. Man hadn't flown, cars weren't invented. You either had your horse or you walked. It's going to take more than piglet power to shift Lucy's chassis. So it's a job for NYMR's 80-year-old steam crane. Um, diddly, oh, that's a life for me. I've done many crane lifts, but I've never actually picked my own steam engine up before, so there's even more pressure. The old crane can lift up to 45 tonnes, so lifting Lucy should be a doddle, if piglet knows what he's doing. That is out, out. Out and out, so it's all out of gear. OK, Charlie, I'm ready. Just take the slack out of it first. OK, going up. Steady as it goes. Really, really steady. Watch out, piglet. Right, well, that's got it. Oh, my God. It's in the air. I need a wee. Nervous wee. Right, clear, everyone clear. The moment of truth. Just got to put it down that final inch. Then I can have a wee of me lunch. I'm starving. Nothing like an empty stomach and full bladder to focus the mind. And she's down. Now Lucy can go to her new home where her restoration can continue. Oh. I'm going to go home. You've got to stand on it. Make sure you wipe your boots. With a copper welding repair still required and only 24 hours until the Q6's boiler inspection, it looked like all hope of hitting the deadline was lost. But overnight, something rather unexpected has happened. In the early hours, a mystery figure arrived at the engine shed and started work on welding the crack in the firebox. Piglet needed a miracle, and it looks like he's got one. Before we knew it, early hours of the morning, he was knocking in door and he, he was in and straight in the firebox and welded it up. Um, I mean, I didn't even know he was here. I never saw him. I, got, I came in at 8 o'clock and he was gone by then. He was in, job welded up and back out again. Brilliant. You know, it's uh, you know, probably charged me a fortune, but uh, job's done, you know, that's the important thing. The boiler inspector is booked to come tomorrow morning. The firebox crack might be fixed, but there's still a lot of work to do to get the rest of the engine ready. We'll probably need about another week to do everything we're doing. They haven't got a week. They've got just 12 hours. First, they need to get the chimney on. Need to watch that light. It's 
turning the wrong way, but he wants to come out the other way. That's it, like that. Yeah, that was a bit tighter than I wanted it to be. But it's on. The team are on a roll. But there's one more problem. Just had a chat with Barney. He tells me that there's a, an issue with the smoke box door not fitting properly on the Q6. So I'm going to go and attack it with the grinder and see if we can get it to fit. Now they're so close, an ill-fitting smoke box door isn't going to stop Mark. Oh. And by late afternoon, they're done. This morning, it looked like an incomplete engine, and here we are. Well, it's five to four, and uh, there's just about a light of fire in it. See? I told you we'd make it. Tomorrow, when the boiler inspector comes, they'll find out if all the blood, sweat and tears have paid off. Another exciting day at the railway. In Pickering, it's a big day for the train-mad ticket-collecting Rose Twins. Our last TTI shift together and then pop off to start our apprenticeship in a couple of weeks. All the hard work at the NYMR has helped them secure places on an engineering apprenticeship with National Rail. Last shifts are always, you know, you'll miss them, but you've got to get on, do new things, still be coming back here, like. It'll be different, but it's life, isn't it? It won't be that different. The boys will be together on the same course studying trains, and they'll be back at the NYMR during holidays working on trains. Hey, Alan, gonna do a burp blower. It'll definitely be quieter on the railway without these two. Missing you already. See you guys soon. Before they head off to start their apprenticeships, they've got one last shift as travelling ticket inspectors. Oh, you all want to hold me well, now? Of course we do. Oh, yeah. my God. And it's shaping up to be a shift to remember. The guys just let us know that there's a sort of funeral party spreading ashes at one end of the train and then there's a wedding at the other, so it's very uh, contrasting train. Put it that way. We're only three tickets per table are valid, so it's up to you to choose who's getting off at the next station. Right? Oh, no, it's shocking, eh? As well as the growing popularity of onboard wedding receptions, the railway has had an increase in requests to mark other special events too. A funeral party are marking the passing of a loved one with a very unconventional send-off. We've gone on the railway today to spread my mum's ashes. She absolutely adored steam railways. This was her favourite train journey. Um, so we thought it was a fitting way to say farewell. The NYMR has arranged for the engine crew to sound the whistle when the ashes are placed in the firebox to be scattered over the beautiful Yorkshire countryside. <laughs> what a way to go. Over at Gromont, it's also a big day at the engine shed. They've been battling to get the Q6, an engine that's 100 years old this year, ready for a crucial boiler safety test. If it passes, the engine will be able to head off to the Seven Valley Railway's special event for 100-year-old steam engines. It's 7 o'clock in the morning. Uh, just got here. Cup of tea, start the day off. Q6 is in steam. We've got the boiler man coming for half past eight to basically give us the nod, yes or no, as if the boiler's all right. No idea what's going to happen. This bit now, we've obviously done all this work in there. We've not tested any of it yet. This is the first time I've had a chance to properly test it. So this is like the do or die moment. If this goes well, we're in for a good chance. The test is carried out by an independent examiner. Done under full steam, it'll prove the boiler can withstand the extreme pressures when the engine runs. Right, let's do the classes first. Do you want to bring that scaffolding around the other side here, somewhere near the safety valves? We're just going to do the gauge frames first, and then we'll set the safety valves afterwards. The first part of the inspection shows no obvious leaks. Even the copper-welded firebox gets the nod. But next comes the most important test, the boiler's safety valves. So these are the two safety valves. They sit on top of the boiler. The valves are set to spring open when the boiler pressure hits 180 pounds per square inch. 
So we're about 165 at the moment. Safety valves are the most important piece of equipment that helps prevent boiler explosions. If the pressure goes above the crucial 180 mark, the engine will fail the test. The valve releases, as does the tension in the engine yard. <laughs> and after one final check, inspecting the smoke box, Check there's nothing leaking from the elements. Uh, the blower pipe, the blast pipe itself, the base. It's all good. Everything's there nice and dry, nice and tight. The boiler passes with flying colours. The engine shed crew have pulled it off. The Q6 can go to the Seven Valley Gala. Happy days. And our boys will get a Great Western 2800 Loco in return. Right, we'll go and, uh, we'll go and get a, a well-earned cup of tea, shall we? Well done, lads. I'd be a saddle on a fat girl's bike. Back at the shed, with Piglet's engine Lucy safely transferred to another truck, all that remains is what should be the simple job of putting her freshly painted water tender into storage. We're in. I'm going to get quite close to the coach, so just be careful. With everyone now gone, Piglet's only got 18-year-old new volunteer, Thomas, to help him. Gently, gently, Piglet. Gently, gently. Are we clear? Oh. <laughs> My pins. Right, turn it round. Other way. Poor Thomas is struggling to control Lucy. I don't think he had his wheat bits this morning. Oh, he's perspiring and everything. Piglet gets right hand man Barney to help. He's not strong enough. Could you just twist that round so we can put it on the floor? Yeah. Uh, you've just got to watch studs on that side on the uh, where the water pick up. See on the right hand side there's some studs hanging down at the yeah. back. Just wants twisting that way a bit, that's it. Boingy boink, that'll do. How's that? How's that? It won't go down because it's flashing overload. Hang on. Oops, it. She may be little, but Lucy's proving a handful. Steady on, Piglet. That was a bit rubbish. Well, I can't leave it like that. I need to square it up. No! It's got to be square. Bloody hell, man. Right, we're making the right arse of this, aren't we? I need to be... I'm not in the middle, am I? That's the problem. Are you ready? Not content with clattering the shed and knocking Barney over, it's time the floor got the piglet special touch. Oh, my God! Have I done that? How have I done that? I haven't done that, have I? I must have done. I think it's time to go before I cause any more damage. Can't get out. Back down the line, twins Ed and Matt have got one more run of their last shift. They're on the 4.30 from Whitby. Just loading up the passengers for the last one out of Whitby. People running, good old last-minute customers. Right, let's jump on here. Last one of the day, we'll get back to Pickering and cash up, sign off, and that's it. Last run or not, Ed's doggedly sticking to his job. It's not too late to get off, I tell you that. After they set off, Matt realises the driver's going a little more slowly than normal. Hopefully we won't stop, but who knows, the driver's a bit hit and miss. They're heading up the 1 in 49 to Gothland, one of the steepest inclines of any steam railway in the country. Not giving it enough steam, or pasty as we like to call it up here, can cause the 100 plus tons engine to grind to a halt. And that's exactly what happens. Come to a stand between Garfield and Grandmont, which is a steep piece of track, so it's particularly challenging on a normal day. The fact that we've got the last one back, everyone on it, pretty busy, it doesn't help. 
It's quite the schoolboy error for the driver to have misjudged the pressure needed to get up the hill. The engine, along with 140 passengers and Matt and Ed, are well and truly stranded. Everyone's really tired and you want to go out. Steam engine fans generally don't care much for diesels, but they do have their uses, as driver John knows very well. Diesels are the, uh, the rescue engines. You can start them up and within half an hour they're ready to move, like the RAC. Though incredibly rare, train collisions are every railway's worst nightmare. Guards carry a surprising bit of kit to help prevent them. So this is a canister of, of detonators that we, uh, we carry on all trains. And they're basically small explosive charges. The explosives are placed on the track so that any approaching train will know that there's another train in distress up the line. Did you get that, John? Safely rescued and back to full steam after its diesel jump start, the train makes it back. Just to add to Pickering. A little bit later than expected, but nothing major. It's the end of what's been a very eventful last day for Matt and Ed. And there's one last surprise for the boys. Boss Chris has come to bid them farewell and good luck. Well then, chaps, that's it then. Uh, yeah. Off the pastor's new. Well done, congratulations. Yeah. I'm sure their gain is our loss, or our loss uh, is their yeah. gain. I'm not yes. sure about that. They're part of the furniture to a certain extent, and we will miss them. They also kind of indicative of where we are with young people, how reliant we are on young people becoming the future of railway heritage. Yeah, you can discover wine, women, and song now, aren't you? Yeah. We won't see you ever again. To mark another special occasion, engine shed boss Piglet has a little surprise for the Q6 loco before it goes off to the Seven Valley Steam Gala. So, yeah, I mean, I've got this little cake here, it's a caterpillar. I mean, 100's not bad, is it? And these engines work hard for us, you know, and they're part of the team, essentially. They yeah. are. That looks all right, isn't it? Looks a bit like a train, sort of. Not sure everyone will agree with that, Piglet. You want one job to get a train cake, and you come with a caterpillar. It was, it was as close as I could get. I've got a cake for Q6, so I was just going to uh, light some candles, look. Oh, it's 100, isn't it? Yeah. 100 year old. Mint that. I know, I couldn't find a train one, though, so I've got to get a caterpillar. Well, it's nearly a train. It's hard, really, really, really exactly. 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 Oh, you're not having any. But nothing's easy in the world of steam. Hang on, let's get his belly in where. All surround. Why has it just got windy now? There's going to be a cab. We get a cake. Well, to be fair, though, it looks all right, doesn't it? It does. Are you going to blow them out, Owen, as you're about right, are you? Gently. No slaver. Oh. Hey. 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 Now, take candles out, cut it up with me. Foot rule. Hey, the white take of technology. Hey, on. It's, it's not my rule. Soften on. the metric side. <laughs> <laughs> we don't use that anyway. Oh, someone's going to get a big bit on the end. Ah. Uh, oh. Well done, Andrew. You've done well. Yeah. Thank you, Nick. All right. Nice one, Mark. Good, good valve timing. It's right. the next yeah. 100 years. Yeah. yeah. The next 100 years. Yeah. Right, can we get out? Because my backside's going to sleep. Yeah. 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 Back, We're on a curve and it's so narrow yeah. there. We can't get out. Shouldn't have had that second slice, Piglet. <laughs> I'm breathing! <laughs> <laughs> I'm through. The Q6 is off to its 100th birthday celebration at the Seven Valley Gala. If you'd asked me on Monday when we were going to make Saturday, I'd have been telling you no. Great sort of achievement at what we've made in such a short time to get to where we are now, really. Next time, it's war. Thirty thousand dress up for a taste of the Blitz spirit, but the weekend becomes a battle with the elements. It's really strong winds. We're saying up to fifty-five mile an hour today, and some unwelcome guests threaten to rain on the military parade. What well, the high street? You're having a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>